My name is Juliano Campo. I'm 14 years old and uh, I enjoy wrestling. I'm Heather Call. I'm 15 and I wrestle for Northeastern. Uh, there are some challenges, like a lot of first-year wrestlers underestimating, thinking, oh, I'm just a girl, that they're going to beat me. Nobody really does make fun of me until, like, I'm coming up against a guy and then they beat me, and they're like, you suck, you know, like, you shouldn't be on this mat, and some people could say, this is why girls don't wrestle. First started out with my dad, because he wrestled in high school. So it was my older two boys, Chris and Alex, and so they started first. Then my eldest daughter asked, is it okay if I try, you know, wrestling? And I told her, I said, you know, you really want to try it? And he's like, yeah, it looks like fun, and she'd like to be interested in it, you know, and check it out and see what it's like. And when we would go to practice and stuff, we start, we'd always take our kids, and that was how Juliana started. It was just in the room seeing it all the time, being around it all the time. So my older sister started it, so when I realized that she was a girl wrestling all these guys, I was like, oh, looks like fun, let's, let's try it. And then that's how I started. Her first uh, meet was actually, she was three years old, weighed about 30 pounds. Hey, there was only three things I showed her, that was it. And that's all when you start, you know, good basics. Um, and she made it through. So many people record her because she was so tiny. Uh, but by the time she hit four, um, she actually was starting to get a style of her own. Juliana dominated right away. I mean, right away, she was she won majority of her matches. Whoever she wrestled, I'm just like, this is awesome. I can't believe this is happening. I was about five years old when I started wrestling. Well, my cousins started wrestling, and that's, I guess, what got me interested in my dad, him being a wrestler. She had some cousins on both sides of the family that started wrestling, came to us one day, her and Olivia, and said that they wanted to wrestle. Um, for me, that was just ecstatic. Well, my brothers wrestled, and Todd wrestled. So when she started being interested in wrestling, it didn't take me by any surprise. She just kind of took off with wrestling and she was a natural at it. It, it took me a while to realize that I'm not gonna teach her to wrestle in my style. Um, she has her own style and that's what we have to encourage and push. Um, drill technique. Good job. My friendship with Heather Crawl means a lot to me. When we were younger, we wrestled each other. We just started training, me and Heather, and then we started talking, and then we just became friends. We wrestle each other quite a bit. We practice with each other in off season quite a bit with other friends. We do camps together. Knowing that we have the same like dreams to be in the Olympics and knowing that we're both hard workers in wrestling and we can take it to these boys is a lot. So knowing I have someone by my side all the way through wrestling, it's great. When I was younger, uh, Kayla Miracle was at one of these tournaments and she actually signed one of her pictures for me. When I found out that Kayla Miracle made it to the state finals, like it was, it was really cool because of her being a girl. I was like just pumped. I was like, okay, well, I'm gonna hopefully be the second girl. Heather's individual. I don't want her to be like, oh, look, this is who you should look up to. It was just more like, I want Heather to do her own thing. I want her to get her own grounds. Actually, I put her through the ringer right away. I said, look, I will support you 100%. 
but there are some things that you're gonna have to deal with when it comes to girls wrestling. And I said, there's people that aren't gonna believe in it. They're not gonna like it. There's referees that aren't gonna like it. Coaches, people, you know, and just let her know it's gonna be a battle, but I'll support you in, in what you wanna do. I know when back in the day, anytime you had to wrestle a girl, the guy would catch grief over it. When Heather used to wrestle Greco, we used to see a lot of boys that fathers would pull them out of the tournament so they didn't have to wrestle a girl. Uh, there are some challenges, like a lot of first-year wrestlers underestimating, thinking, oh, I'm just a girl, that they're going to beat me. When I watch Heather wrestle, I always watch the boys. And I always watch them size her up and down and smirk. And then as soon as they smirk, I see a light bulb go off in Heather's head. Like, all right, thanks for smirking. And that was her drive. Boys, me being a girl, they like, take us as in, oh, I'm wrestling a girl, you know, it should be easy, or they're like, I'm gonna take it easy, and that I just don't like that, because I joined this guy's sport because I was interested in it. I don't want boys to underestimate me saying, it's a girl, like, I'm gonna go easy, and then if you beat them, then they take it as an excuse. Like, I was going easy on you, and it's just like, it, I don't like that. <laughs> She is very strong, but there are those points that she wrestles boys that they're, they're going to be stronger than the hurt, and we have to rely on that technique to get it through the match. Nobody really does make fun of me until, like, I'm coming up against a guy and then they beat me, and they're like, you suck, you know, like, you shouldn't be on this mat, and some people could say, this is why girls don't wrestle, and... I just don't like hearing the negativity about girls wrestling guys. I have seen uh, frustrations in my father's part that, you know, how dare you let a girl beat you. And I don't really think it has anything to do with boy or girl. It has to do with your ability and what you're doing. Seeing people like upset about losing to a girl, it's like, if she's good, then what's the problem, you know? Like, I don't understand how, because of you being a guy, like sometimes you get those boys where, oh, you lost to a girl, you suck, and all that stuff, and it's not true. It just, depending on who you come up against is what's gonna happen. I never wanna see her get hurt, but it's exciting when she puts her head up and she goes out there and does what Heather does and she walks off the mat girls can be just as tough or even tougher than these boys. And if we work to be, like to get to places, then we're gonna try our hardest to beat these boys. And if, you, if they lose, then there's no reason to go after them. Like they should, you know, work harder or push themselves even more. From Northeastern, Heather Crawl. I was kind of not happy about it because I wanted us both to win, but we were both 106s, so we had to verse each other. And um, it was a great match. I love wrestling her. She makes me push myself a lot. We've been wrestling partners forever, so we know how each other wrestle, you know. Uh, so it was a little nerve wracking, like, uh, she knows what I'm gonna do, you know, like this is this is terrifying. But it was a great match. I loved wrestling her. I think in the girls' state finals, she showed some emotion. She was very happy, but I think it's because uh, her and Heather, you know, are, are good friends and they've been competitors, you know, against each other, you know, many times since they were little. And I think she was just happy about that moment. They both held their hands, they both, you know, pulled them up in the air together is a really good picture of it. And I think that's why it brought a big smile out of her face, so. Let's see, before stay, my record was probably 46 and three. My final record was 40 and five, 
which made me very proud. I lost to all ranked kids, so that didn't really upset me as much, but I was still upset about the losses, but it was a great season overall. Heather is very determined. A few years ago, she told me that her goal was go to state, and I had no doubt in my mind that she would do that. And I had no doubt in my mind she'd make it this year. It was a hope. I was just going to see how far I could go, because I didn't really know what to expect out of the high school season since I'm a freshman. I just kept my mind straight, and I was like, we're going to make it past sectionals, regionals, semi-state, and we're making it to stay. I was like, we're going to be the second girl. It's going to happen. Sectionals and regionals, I came out both being the champ, which was very exciting. Um, what I didn't like, though, is both final matches was against the same kid, and I was like, no, like, I, I don't want to wrestle him again. Like, I want somebody different. I won first at both sectional and regional. Our school probably has the easiest walk through to semi-state. I know Fort Wayne, Jules, Semi-State, and Newcastle, Semi-State, are some of the toughest in the area. The day of Semi-State, it was just another day. You get there, get weighed in, step on the mat, and, and wrestle. Oh, Semi-State, that was pretty big. I just go there, let her try and enjoy it. We literally went in and walked around the arena probably 20 times. <laughs> That's all we did. I was a little nervous at semi-state, but once I started talking to like all my friends, like friends I haven't seen in a while, and they were telling me, oh, good luck, you got this, I believe in you. That really helped me get all the nerve away, and I was very excited about that. So the first match, I think we watched him see what he was gonna do. I went out there, wrestled. It was still tough. Still beat him. Still pinned him. And I knew when it came to that match for the ticket round that she was going to win. I knew she was. I had a lot of faith in myself because I wrestled them before, like, deeper into the season. Usually when you wrestle people more, it gets difficult because they're training for you. Like, yeah, we're going to beat this person. Winning the match and seeing all these people cheer me on and like knowing that I'm a girl and made it to state the second girl, it just like made me really happy and I was excited about it. There was a lot of cheering, a lot of yelling, you know, I had so many people. She has so many fans and people that are behind her. It's just, it's amazing how many people that she's, you know, brought into the sport especially, you know, to support girls. Right after it was over, I she didn't come up to me and I texted her, I'm like, if you don't get up and come see your mother right now. And, and, and I still had like tears coming down my face because I couldn't believe it. I was like, I was, I'm so proud of you and I was bawling and like, I love you. And then of course, a million other people were trying to grab her and I'm like, no, like, go away. This is, this is my time. <laughs> I was trying to treat it like a normal match, go out there, wrestle, my style. Number two, on deck, Evan Dickey and Tommy Frazier. It, it was a tough match. Uh, it was kind of close. Ended up riding him out in the third period. I heard 
when I won was the crowd insane, like the whole gymnasium was cheering for me. My whole thought process was, it's a normal match, walk on, walk off. Obviously when she punched her ticket, um, the entire gymnasium erupted. You know, I think I told her, I said, listen that, it's for you. Right after I came off the mat, I asked my dad, I was like, did Heather make it? And I didn't get anything because she didn't wrestle at that moment, like she was still wrestling her match. But then I got my phone and I texted her, I was like, how'd it go? And she was like, I made it. I was like, let's go. I was like, you, we both made it. I was like, I want us both to make it past. And we both believed in each other and we're like, we got this, you know, we're gonna make it there. When I heard that she made it, I was pretty exciting because previously we had talked about going to state together and being two girls, both good to state, hopefully wrestle each other. We had our school media come up to us and we did a little interview. I know the Indianapolis Star come out and interviewed her. Um, she did a couple radio interviews in the mornings that her mom had to take her to. So this morning we are very privileged to have Heather here. Now, Heather, okay, obviously let's state the obvious. You are a girl in a male-dominated sport. So yeah. tell me about that right there and how that, and you're, what year are you, by the way? I think for her that was nerve-wracking because she doesn't like to be noticed. You know, she, she'd rather just stay in her little bubble and not be noticed. She took it in stride. She very seldom shows a lot of emotion leading up or whether she's anxious or you know, nervous. She's usually stone cold, so it's, it's just it's her demeanor. Sports coverage you can count on. Freshman phenom Juliana Ocampo continues to make history with the New Haven wrestling team. After winning sectional and regional titles against all boys, Jules qualifying for state with a good showing at semi-state last weekend. It feels great. I mean, knowing that I'm one of the New Haven wrestlers now and I'm creating history, I'm happy about it. Campo and the rest of the qualifiers will compete for a state title on Friday and Saturday in Indianapolis. Josh Ahan, Wake 15 Sports. It was challenging the week of state, um, just trying to get ready mentally, you know, knowing uh, who your competition is going to be. Um, so that was, you know, our focus was to her to, to learn him as much as possible and try and use that. Uh, in the match when it came forward. I mean, you just got to be smart about it. So we were going over everything I should be looking for and watching my opponent's matches, seeing what he does, preparing for his style. You always worry about maybe a dirty wrestler or something like that, especially a boy going against a girl, because you know they're under the pressure also, because they don't want to be that first guy that loses the girl in the state final. Mostly our whole team was still there supporting me, practicing with me. I run practices, so making sure everything's lined out, we're drilling what we need to drill. And like she said, our, our entire team was there to support her all the way through. It definitely was, you know, hectic as far as like in my mind, or is she ready for this? You know, is she ready to go? She knows what she needs, she knows what she's got to do. And as soon as she gets on that mat, it's, it's all business. She's right to it. Walking in the Parade of Champions was great because I feel like I pushed myself just as much as all the boys did and I deserved to be there. It felt a little weird, <laughs> like knowing that it's all boys and then you're one of the two girls walking in the Parade of Champions, but it was a great feeling. It's pretty exciting. It was a little intimidating seeing everyone walk out there and all the teams. I wanted her to know no matter what, like, you did it. You did it. The one thing that people thought you weren't going to do, um, you and Heather both. 
while I was walking back and forth, uh, I was a little nervous because like it's it's nerve wracking being like one of the girls and your first match. Like I I don't like being the first match. I like being like either the middle or the last because like you get time to like think over things. Just focused and seeing you know how she was reacting and it was really cool because they actually announced on the system there that tonight was ladies night. This time this feature, this tournament features two young ladies who will be wrestling. When he introduced us, that was amazing. I started smiling. I was like, that's like great. Like I never would have thought that people would actually do that, especially out of like all the negativity that we get for being girls wrestling guys. But hearing him saying it's ladies night, that made my whole entire day. And although we're still a couple of minutes away from starting the wrestling, let's go ahead and introduce the competitors. On that three from Crown Point High School, Gavin Andreas. And from New Haven, Juliana Ocampo. When she was ready to go, I think she was on it. She didn't seem like she was nervous when she was wrestling. I think she brought her best in that match. I knew he was a good wrestler. I knew I needed to go out there hard. He got the first takedown. He got an escape. She took him down. So when she took that shot and got that takedown, I feel like that was a big momentum changer immediately in the match. She gets the takedown, he gets back up. He ran a chicken wing. The arm had come straight over top. It wasn't being ran around the head like you're supposed to. And I think it's because she didn't give in. I do not like getting pinned, so if I get injured, then I get injured. As long as I don't get pinned, I'm cool with it. I was yelling, like, you know, shoulder, shoulder, and um, they ended up stopping because the time ran out. And that was the first time that it happened and you could tell right away that she was hurt. And you can see, because she was squeezing her hand, shaking her hand, so obviously her arm was numb. He scored again. All right, let's get you! She went to shoot on him. He tried to defend and cut the corner, and she caught his elbow and cartwheeled over top of him, uh, which had a really good chance to put him on his back in that match, and the crowd went wild. It was awesome. I surprised myself. I was like, oh my gosh. But he was able to, to get out of that, um, and I believe it was only a one point match at that time. And then it happened again the second time in the match. It's like just a two near fall there, but that widens the gap here. We got 11 to five lead for Gavin Andreas. And once that happened, I think that kind of iced her because um, it was the exact same arm, ran it again, didn't stop it, counted back points, and then she they stopped the match. Um, and she was down for the count. I came out there and asked him right away. So you don't think that that was, you know, dangerous, potentially dangerous? The arm went straight over top. And he said, no, I think it was good. After that happened and then I continued the match, it was like I wasn't really there anymore. And then I kind of seen a shift in her. It just like all of my confidence just went down and it just like stopped me. Keep moving! And from Northeastern High School, Heather Crawl. Juliana Ocampo wrestling on the other mat over here. Um, was the second. Heather Crawl, she's a freshman too, 45 and three on the season. And then Luke Rio is a sophomore, 34 four. Mavon. Um, both the tough. Both girls who qualify for state wrestled in the state, the girls state finals. Ooh, that was, uh, that was a nice little roll for you. With the real quick. When we were wrestling side by side, I felt like I was just too into my match to look over, 
but I feel like there was probably a few times that I just glanced to see like what was the score, but. There was no eye contact through that. She was worrying about her own match and I was, I was worrying about mine. I told myself, well, after I'm done wrestling, we'll see her, okay? Like just get into your match and then we'll talk about it afterwards. Wow, what a performance, so. Walking off the mat, I felt really upset. You know, she was crying because I think I don't know if it was more her shoulder or the loss. It could be both. I wasn't into it. I kind of was like down, didn't really want to talk to anybody because I was hoping to win my match. I just, I wanted to know she was okay, and same thing, like, get up here and come see your mother. <laughs> come see your mother, you know. She did everything she could, um, and I was proud of her, you know, for competing. It was so nerve-wracking having Juliana be done and then watching Heather wrestle because Heather was wrestling a boy that Juliana already had. You can't finish a shot with your head down, one arm on the leg. you got to get two hands on it. So that's definitely one thing about girls, is they are naturally known for having much heavier hips than the guys. In my opinion, I feel like I didn't wrestle like me, but it's okay, I still wrestled and made it there. Looks like Rio's gonna come away with the victory here. Man, hey, don't be out Heather Cole out though, she will definitely be back. She's got three more years left. She comes up and hugs me, I tell her I'm proud of her. A reminder that it's just, just a stepping stone to her ultimate goal and uh, to hold her head up. Luke, like I said before, was a great opponent. I, and you know, I'm proud of Heather. She wrestled well. I, I don't think, she, like she said, she wrestled to her capability. But, but you could also tell that she was a little nervous. And I think the local support and the, the recognition that she was getting uh, made her more nervous than the actual match. But I did realized that Heather didn't win either and then I texted her afterwards I was like we both did amazing like we did great but and then I was like we'll make it there again next year. I was again crying I'm like it's okay like like you were in it you did the best you could we're gonna come back next year you got this. I want to place at state it's my next school it's place at state. I believe I can be the first girl to place at Boys State um, because I believe in myself a lot and I work very hard, especially if I really want something to happen. I think the sky's the limit. I think she can attain anything. I don't know anyone that has her drive as far as how hard you know she's willing to work when she goes for it. You know, she loves, she actually genuinely loves the sport. I hope it to make it to Olympics in the world team. I'm hoping Heather goes all the way. You know, um, I do believe she has great potential and I think that you know, if she keeps growing like she is and she has great practice partners and keeps doing the drive that she has, I believe she'll make it all the way. You know, I felt like honored to be her mom and to see how she's helping grow in the sports for girls wrestling. My main personal goal is probably being an Olympic gold medalist. That's my main goal. As soon as I turn 17, I'm going to try and wrestle off for a spot on the Olympics team. So, Girls wrestling in general, I think it's going to grow a lot. These younger girls, like they see us older girls like building and us girls that wrestle guys, they see like, oh, you know, we can be just as tough as all these boys. Like, we're going to like show them up, like it's gonna happen. And I believe like Indiana's trying their hardest to grow it a lot more than what they have right now. I think it's gonna continue to grow like it has been and I hope for it to grow and hope for a lot of girls to fall in love with the sport like I have. A few of my younger teammates on the elementary team say they wanna be just like me and say they're I'm their inspiration. My mom has actually got a text from a few people that have been telling them, your daughter's a very big inspiration to my little girl. And I was like, so like, I just love hearing that. And I love hearing girls like come up to me telling me good job and that they love me. And it's just like all the positive stuff makes me really happy.